What is up people of the Arrowverse? Welcome to a brand new and I would say quite exciting video because we are, as you can tell from the title, getting into the upcoming Green Lantern story that is coming with John Diggle appearing in multiple episodes this season on top of, you know, David Ramsey himself directing a few. So we're going to get into some details. There was a few details that came out quite a few days ago now, but just yesterday there's even more. Some that are, <laughs> let's just say, very interesting, such as... Diggle refusing the Green Lantern ring. Yes, you heard me right, and we're going to get into that. So go ahead, if you enjoy this video, to like it. I'd really appreciate that, but let's get into this. So initially, David Ramsey was supposed to have an arc that spanned the multiple shows, which was actually this five-episode story that was going to be pretty cohesive in the Green Lantern story that visited the very scene we left him with where he found the box from the meteorite. He opened it. There was a green ring in... Well, we didn't see the ring but it's very obvious where that was gonna go but due to covid restrictions delays and whatnot it was kind of impossible to make that story make sense across the shows and by the way i'm abbreviating uh, what todd helbing has said about this so he is still appearing as himself in the shows because he's still guest starring in five different episodes and he's actually directing three of them the most important one being the superman and lois one later on in superman and lois's season it's just that it's now been restructured or as todd helbing explained explains that there's still a through line but it's just not as A to B to C as planned and he says that ours the Superman and Lois episode is kind of a little bit more of a one-off he explains but thematically it still plays. On top of that Todd Helbing does heavily emphasize that the episode gets into the mentality of where he is in his life based on everything that has happened to him over the last several years but this news is you know a few days old now and let's just get to the even bigger update. So yesterday TV Line released an exclusive article where they had the chance to talk to David Ramsey about his quote-unquote mystery role and as I said this includes a lot of details in such as him refusing the ring and I have to admit when I first heard that I was a bit like huh I, I wait, wait what I mean once you were thirsting to become the green arrow so so why would you give up the opportunity to to take the mantle on but there is context which I admit I was a bit rash to jump to conclusions with and maybe some of you are reacting the same way because I saw a lot of people thinking what the heck but let's give David Ramsey a chance to explain this himself. In this article he goes to talk about directing and many other things so I'll leave the article linked in my top pin comment as usual where you can also find other links to my discord and social media and whatnot but let's get to the meat of it. So David Ramsey addresses that there was press out there which we, we all know about that he would have a mystery role on Legends of Tomorrow and this kind of made fans think that would be the episode where he'd perhaps go all out lantern or at the very least that would be coming to fruition in one way shape or form but he notes that from that wording there was an assumption that because obviously legends has a time ship and they go through time and space and to kind of come to the conclusion that ah you know that must mean that we're gonna see the green lantern core in space or something but really he's a different character altogether uh, a historical western Western character. I mean, of course, this is Legends, and fair enough if you like Legends, but moving on. He mentions that what has happened to Diggle since encountering that green box will be explored in the other episodes, such as Batwoman, Flash, Superman and Lois, and Supergirl, whereas that Legends episode will kind of revolve around that historical Western character. Now, here's the kicker. Whatever was in the box, he refused the invitation of. Let's put it like that. But there are consequences to that, David Ramsey says. And this is where things get interesting. And to be honest, I'm kind of looking forward to see these consequences and how, you know, the refusal of the ring is going to, you know, really affect him that way. And we do get a little tease of some of the symptoms that he gets, but we'll get into that in just a minute. So, so far, as I said, I've abbreviated some of these quotes, but this next one I want to read out directly. So David Ramsey goes on to say that we've gone to great lengths over the years to make Diggle one of the more grounded characters. Anytime he would go fast with the flash he would throw up and he was always amazed when he saw someone flying all of these things were kind of otherworldly to him because he was a very earthbound hero and after crisis he got back his wife who was abducted by the monitor and he got back his daughter sarah 
who was taken out of existence by Flashpoint. So part of Diggle's story is that the last thing he would want to do right now is receive an invitation from something otherworldly because he finally has his family back and he lost his best friend to some otherworldliness. So he refused the invitation of whatever was in the box, but there are consequences to that. And that story, what he will do next, is part of what we will tell throughout these four episodes. Now, obviously, he's he's kind of speaking with quite a bit of nuance. They can't exactly call it a green lantern ring. And, and I'm going to offer my thoughts later as to probably what we're going to see with likely and potential limitations on the Green Lantern character. The way this is being articulated here is kind of beating around the bush, but we all evidently know what the heck he's talking about. Um, and, you know, to be honest, as I said earlier, I, I kind of jumped on this quite fast thinking, you know, you were thirsting to become the Green Arrow. Why would you literally reject a ring? But I kind of appreciate this uh, psyche, this little look into Diggle's psyche. And it does make some sense, but I really want them to add some depth into it because we've got other characters like Barry Allen who lost Oliver as well. I know Diggle was a bit closer in, in more ways than one, but we've also had multiple characters move on from Crisis and still be their heroic self. So initially I and quite a few other people were surprised at the refusal of the ring, but it's kind of interesting to hear that. But I would love to know your thoughts on that. Now, interestingly, TV Line also asked this, of all the characters that Diggle runs into on the four shows, does anyone possibly have insight into exactly what he's been dealing with? Has anyone heard tell of a core of galactic law and forces or anything like that? And he replies, no, we don't get into that. This is a very, very, very preliminary look at what happens from this refusal and what it means to his destiny. We simply get into the preliminary physical effects of his refusal of whatever it was in that box. Come on, David. It's, it's the ring. Just say it. Just say it. But yeah, this is what I mean. I still feel like even though this is going to be an interesting Green Lantern story in these episodes unfold for Diggle, and it's so obvious that is, you know, a part of his destiny and what they're tackling with this story arc, I still feel like the CW themselves are going to beat around the bush. For example, this very question, you would have somebody who would, would have dealings or know about the Green Lantern core in space, but they're not going to get into that because I don't think they can really get into that kind of thing. In a similar sense to how, you know, you can't really see Batman in a TV show. Gotham kind of showed it at the very end. So that's why I'm not ruling out actually seeing the ring and maybe even Diggle putting it on. And I'll offer more thoughts on this in just a little bit. But I still feel like there's going to be, as, well, Diggle says himself, or should I say David Ramsey, as a result of that, it's a very, very preliminary look at, you know, the whole story and his journey there with the means and limitations that the CW has with handling this character. I know that sounds silly, by the way, like embargoing a character and this, that, and the other, but this is exactly why you haven't had a fully-fledged Joker on TV, or a Batman TV show, or not even Batman and Titans, but you can use Bruce Wayne, you know, just stuff like that. That doesn't mean we won't see Diggle use the ring or something like that, but I don't think they're going to give it to us in our face, like probably every fan wants to see. But moving onwards, TV Line then detailed a part of that storyline of Diggle refusing the green box or whatever was inside it, so AKA the Green Lantern Ring, it takes him to Gotham, which is obviously the, the first guest stop, as TV Line puts it, on Batwoman. So they ask, what takes Dig to Gotham? Because best that I recall, he doesn't know anybody there, right? Now, David Ramsey says, headaches debilitating headaches and he's hearing voices oh that's that's very interesting anyway he goes to gotham to get help with this to see a physician there and in the meantime his argus story continues his wife is still head of argus and he's co-head and that's part of what he brings when he goes to these cities he's there to assist and help in whatever way he can with his access to argus that's a very big part of who he is so this is what i mean it's like i think you know this story arc was going to be a lot bigger originally centering a lot more in the green lantern mythos if you will but we're going to get little trinkles of it and then as I said the Superman and Lois episode being the most prominent. A lot of the cool little teases of tidbits if you will are like when he's asked if there will be any other Arrow mentions during these episodes and he does explain that it goes as far as mentioning Oliver in these stories but that is the extent of it you know you're not going to necessarily hear anything about Laurel but the interesting spark being we are really trying to show that John Diggle has moved on from that Yet, there's something that's pulling him, something that's a lot more bigger and far more cosmic 
than he's letting on. So we can obviously read between the lines here. John Diggle refuses the ring. We've got a bit of an explanation for that. There's a bit of, you know, otherworldliness to it that he doesn't necessarily want to get involved in. I'm still kind of, I, I, I want to see that unfold first because I don't know, I, I feel like you would almost want to do that, but at the same time, it's going to be an interesting story to explore. I'm fully subscribed to that because we are going to see very interesting repercussions from his refusal. Like, it's going to be calling out to him. He's going to be hearing voices. There's headaches. Like, <laughs> I think it's a thing of where he can't escape his destiny. He, he initially probably closes the box, puts it away. Uh, it seems that maybe he hasn't even told Lila or anyone. He's really trying to escape it. And in these episodes, we're going to see that unfold. But I, I think this is kind of obvious by the Superman and Lois episode after this story arc is kind of finished. I mean, I'm going to be pretty pissed if, he, if he's like, you know what, this ain't for me. But I really hope, I mean, for crying out loud, that he does decide to accept it as his destiny, perhaps through being inspired by these other heroes throughout the episodes he appears in. And in the Superman and Lois episode, it kind of culminates to this precipice moment, if you will, where he's like, I don't know, maybe we even see him put on the ring. Because that brings me back to what I was saying earlier. Regardless, I, I don't think the CW have the green light to see a full-on flying around Diggle Green Lantern in mad action sequences. And I'll hold my hands up if I'm wrong. Seriously, I will. But I I think this story will end with him accepting a new path and destiny that we might even see him put the ring on. That would be wicked. We might see it glow green. But honestly, I, I just really wouldn't be surprised if that's it. I think it would be incredible if he if he puts it on, it glows green, and he projects one of the lantern weapons or something. But, ah, man, I, I just, I don't know if it's really going to go there. As, as David Ramsey says himself, this is a very preliminary thing. And when I read between the lines of that, I don't think they have, as I said, all the green lights. So they're doing what they can. And it's very nuanced. But they probably do have permission to actually implement the ring itself on screen rather than just show, showing a box where it's, I don't know, being lit green. But at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised Honestly, if we don't even see him put it on and and it's just at the end of the Superman and Lois episode He accepts his destiny and we see him open the box But he kind of takes it out But the camera angle is maybe per, perhaps positioned behind the box and he just smiles I think I really wouldn't be surprised if that's the limitation of it But I will be so happy if they surprise me by doing something more But that just about explains everything guys. So obviously we have a little thing to look forward to here I'm looking forward to it myself. I really hope we don't get too disappointed In fact, obviously I'm rooting for it to be a very successful and and fan buzzing kind of thing that ends in Superman and Lois with you know, every fan being happy that we know that's where Digger was going because obviously we're not going to see, even if he accepts this as his destiny and puts the ring on, we're not going to see multiple episodes after this in the in the coming weeks of him flying around with it. It, it would just be that kind of thing where we know that's where Digger is going and, and we know he, he is Green Lantern now maybe. But I guess this doesn't rule out a potential appearance in a future, future crossover as the Green Lantern, but as I said again, you know, HBO Max have a whole Green Lantern show coming, plus, as I mentioned earlier, there are such things as they don't necessarily always like characters being used in TV. It's a complicated subject that includes, I guess, diluting the brand of the character where they feel like if it doesn't go so well on the TV, they rather have it be done in such a spectacle in a movie. That's why you don't have Joker rinsed in TV, for example. It's reserved for the more prestigious kind of efforts of a film, if that makes sense. That might give you some kind of idea there, but that doesn't mean one day in the future when maybe popularity uh, simmers down a tad, we might get Batman TV shows and whatnot. But I'm going to stop rambling now and end the video, I suppose. So if you got this far, guys, I would love to hear your thoughts. I would really appreciate a like on the video, of course. And maybe you could check out my Twitter links and whatnot in the top pin comment. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a lovely rest of your day. And I'll see you people of the Arrowverse in the next video. Goodbye.